And so we can take advantage of the fact that other fields have got some form of standardization uh, and really take that as a positive. It's also potentially an action that we should do in, in terms of standardization. But that, is, that has worked in other areas, uh, so why should it not work for us? Um, Eric mentioned that, that we already have a fast I.O. for reading and uh, writing, so, so that's a, a positive too. Uh, now in terms of negatives, oh golly, um, so, so there, there was a compl complaint about storage space. Now I think somebody also mentioned yesterday that storage was actually pretty cheap nowadays, so that's perhaps not a worry. Um, so maybe I don't know whether that really is a negative. Um, simulation parameter ontology, can somebody help with that? Well, if we want to collect things for defining what should be in a paper or whatever and make it searchable okay. in terms of metadata, yeah. you need to agree on keywords, basically, that describe different parameters. So that we all use the same keywords to describe the same thing. Um, another major, I think, um, negative is the fact that this has been decades of discussion. Um, so it's not the first time we've met I haven't. I mean, this is my first time, but it's certainly not the first time for some of you in terms of discussing these sort of practices. Um, so can, can we make this the, the sort of jumping off point to really uh, go, go forwards? Um, the visualization tools are pretty good, and they could always be better, of course, and um, so can they be improved? Um, I don't necessarily, again, think this is a negative, but it could be something that we either uh, act upon. Um, and people have different needs. So it really depends on what sort of questions you're trying to address, what you're trying to answer. It depends on, the, therefore, the, the format that you require. Um, I mentioned about open force fields. Eric also touched upon the fact that there are closed force fields, and that's absolutely a negative for my book. Um, and I think, uh, ish, yeah. Let's keep them open. Uh, reading kind of writing. So editor's journals, more demand. Data report. So we yeah. Yeah. Actually, we were thinking about that if there would be more demand also from the journals, you know, to report more details about. Yeah. Sorry. So the, the, obviously, within the structural biology field, there's a, a, a if you solve a protein structure by X-ray crystallography, there's a table associated with, with all the the results, the metadata of, of what what comes out from the, the, the structural determination. Should should journals have the same? Um, practice for MD simulations. Should, should we have to up upload something of a table uh, that, that, that details uh, everything that, that has gone on within the simulation? Um, and then that also a, a sort of standard reporting of the parameters uh, so that somebody could reproduce um, those, those simulations. Now, in terms of initiatives already in place, um, the, the, the MMSIF format I mentioned previously is already in place, and there's something that it called the MMSIF MDB that uh, so that I'm uh, Or MSB, but there is an extension of the MMSIF already to represent some molecular simulation data. I mean, it's mainly, it was mainly meant for homology modeling type, but it has a molecular dynamics entry where there is like very different condition. Uh, Quite kind of constraining algorithm you use. There's a lot of things that are describing parameters and the simulations that are already defined there. What is it called? It, it's part of the official MMC for a format, and mm -hmm. it's MMC for the score. Uh, mm -hmm. MDB. MDB. MDB, molecular. Yeah. Let me check if I have it open. MDB, yeah. And it has MDB underscore minimization and it's MDB underscore dynamics. So it, it's a start. It probably doesn't have everything, but it allows you to, to describe parameters of the simulation. So. Um, the fact that we're meeting under the sort of BioXL banner tells us something. So the initiative for BioXL is already in place. Um, so I, that's obviously a, a, a very good thing that, that, that is helping develop the field. Uh, MD analysis is an analysis tool, MD tranche is another that is no longer supported, but um, MD analysis is a, a sort of way forward for, for, for future analysis, and, and Oli Beckstein is certainly uh, still very much uh, heading that up. Um, the fact that Eric mentioned this PLOS white paper that they're discussing, is, is that out yet, Eric? Or is no, it? I take it. It hasn't appeared yet, uh, but it should be out in a week or two. I mean, that, that, that's an absolutely an essential, essential initiative that, that, that's got both sort of key players within the field, but also the, uh, the, the publications are, uh, on 
some board as well, yeah, really. um, and, and we also wondered whether there should be some sort of benchmarks that PLOS went forward as well um, with, but that uh, can be discussed. Uh, in terms of actions, um, we need to identify, identify what actually are the needs within the community. Um, so that can be something we discuss over the next few days and, and then come up with our own, our own white paper. Um, the, there are readers in place, um, but I, I think Gromax needs a, an MMSIF reader. Um, and I know Haddock too, potentially, but obviously you convert back to PDB format before then going into uh, to use Haddock. Um, we need to talk to the various PDBs, including the, the WW PDB, um, just to, to, to get us some sort of consensus on this the required formats. Yeah, he was there also just to comment on that one. Yeah, he was saying it would be cool if you could go to a PDB entry and find all the simulations that have been started from that entry. But for that, I think it's important that we talk to them. So if you were to integrate this data, would you, with what kind of format would you like to support? But I don't think that's going to do any of the file formats, right? That's right. No, it's Providing for the data. file formats to make it easier for people to yeah. mine everything and start creating yeah. these links yeah. out. But if we come with a format that we have to change all our machinery to be able to, to use it, that's going to be a huge effort from their side, and they're probably not going to do it. But if you tell you, oh, if you provide us JSON, then it's fine, or MMC, if it's fine, then we know that. Then we can just integrate it. Yeah, so I've actually written, written that as well. So there's a link directly from the PDBs, a sort of simulation uh, information. Uh, we need to talk to the journal editors. Um, as well, just to get an idea of the, these sort of benchmarks or otherwise the, 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 the sort of inf integration of all the sort of uh, parameters within the, when it comes to publishing a paper. A um, couple of key things that, that Eric mentioned as well, um, reproducibility uh, of the data, and that's certainly something that we should act upon, uh, and also looking at other formats such as YAML uh, and JSON as well. Uh, and there's probably a couple of things I missed, but, but I, I think that's enough for that. Good, all right, thank you. So we might move on to, to Team Yellow. Um, can we elect a spokesperson to tell us about your things? And as we go through them, those that are new, I might transfer to the new one. Those that are similar to what we've already talked about, I'll add to the ones there. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I think that's why I thought it was more in an action than, than already a positive. But that, that, that was just a... Well, that JSON exists as a positive thing. Yes, absolutely, yeah. But then it's an easy no, no, no. It is both positive and an action. We have so. existing formats, and on SIF, I think existing format JSON is yeah, kind of the same yeah. thing. Okay. Um, so, this file format, uh, well, that's again an action idea, uh, needs to be something that is hard solid in software. So, you need to come with a file format and be able to use it directly in your core software. Or whatever. Um, so that goes together with the efforts from the key software, so it cannot come like just uh, from the user point of view, it needs to come also from the, of course, the software uh, provider. Uh, but that would actually be there now. Yeah? To convince, nice foundation, to convince. Uh, for software to do things, uh, it needs to be a shared ownership. You cannot just say uh, to someone just do it and that's it. It needs to find some priorities, it needs to find its own priorities within the, the initiative. So it needs to be shared ownership between the, the different partners. Okay. <clears throat> uh, we may need to have a portable uh, library API. Uh, as we could find for uh, the IHMMC format where this file in HPI, ultimately you would like to extend it to C, C++, the common language. Uh, to uh, allow the users uh, to basically easily uh, write and read this format. But the cost of that well. um, Having a way to define validate a file goes kind of together with the uh, uh, API. Uh, what we have for, for the IHMM SIF that you have a full this dictionary against which you validate your file each time you want to deposit something. So with a clear metadata, he still can validate the Running a big pile of software people need to do things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But actually, once you have like this uh, uh, definition of metadata, it, it doesn't need to be like uh, a software team that does. I mean, a software team. I mean, an um, MD software team. Mm. Be anyone. Sure. Um, yeah, it needs to be a self-contained file in the sense that one file, one simulation. So we discussed a lot about this uh, multi format or not uh, concept. So should we have, uh, like, on one side, parameters uh, uh, and things like that, on the other side, just the coordinates, or should we have everything in one file? And we think that uh, the best way to achieve what we want to achieve is like to have a file where everything is in there. Uh, okay, it might uh, raise some issue in terms of performances, in terms of size of the file, but it shouldn't be uh, the limits we put to parcel right now uh, at first. Because there are technologies that exist and because we might be able uh, more easily to overcome these uh, limitations through uh, some uh, technology. Uh, One check of those, it's better to spend compute cycles and bytes on disk than humans making mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's more expensive. Um, yeah. Yes, sir. Can, I, can I just say that given the actions are getting quite large, I'm a bit concerned about workload for software. Yeah. <laughs> Whether, uh, as was said earlier in the morning, that we need to really refine exactly what, what are the achievables in, in the near future, rather than just doing that sort of wish list uh, for, for, for whatever's possible. All right, let's, let's take that as an action item after we've collected everything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, I didn't even know what I'm going here. So what makes it impossible? Different priorities for the different uh, stakeholders or like the people involved. Or the different needs, different needs, different yeah. yeah. Uh, the diversity on the amount of data we need to uh, store on share. That's an obvious one. Story space. So unclear what the MVP is, uh, or which will have most impact. The what? So what will be the MVP? Uh, Minimum value. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I guess uh, that's, that's priorities and needs as well. 
and this will work well. On the initiative, I think we already said, so MD analysis on MD treasure are two examples of, uh, yeah, of efforts that have been made to try to, uh, to have something generic enough to read and write uh, in different formats. Uh, so we can inspire ourselves on, on this initiative. On the IHM MMC, of course, I have groups. Okay. Sorry, what's the last one? The IHM MMCF uh, initiative, the one that uh, Alex did just right. So let's go with the orange. Yeah. 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 So, listening to everyone, uh, something that kind of struck me is that uh, actually what you guys are trying to do is build ontologies. Um, so there's actual ontology initiatives that try to interface from quantum mechanics up to the actual mechanics of a car. Um, it, it's a very complicated thing, a very long-term thing, but just know that these things are out there and people are at least trying them. Um, so it's worth at least seeing what they do. Um, you know, I, I think the way that these things will eventually work is that like every little field will have uh, their own ontologies that will slowly grow together, hopefully over time, over a very long time. Um, so I don't know if this is a negative or a positive thing due to the time investment compared to the payoff, but I think it at least deserves to be on the boat. Um, and on that, whenever you think about ontologies, the other uh, kind of neat technology that you start thinking about is the semantic web. Um, so you, you have things that are not necessarily um, glued to like a single um, schema, but how do you create schema that can interoperate? How can they all connect together? Um, and again, I, I think it's never really never negative or positive simply because it's it's extremely complicated idea and not something that I really recommend doing um, right off the bat, but at least again being on the boat and something to be aware of. Um, <clears throat> so on that, a big positive is that uh, there's similar initiatives in other fields. Um, so in quantum materials, there's four or five. In quantum chemistry, where uh, Molsi is actually doing one. Uh, in uh, things like um, cryo-EM, there's tons of spec and schemas coming out. So there's a lot of initiatives um, that are relatively similar and good ideas that you can pull from there. So, so is that you can merge most version? of those with pink ones, actually. <laughs> um, where's the spec? So we have one below. And then those fields. So in initiatives, we already have these are existing oh, okay. things that go in various directions. And then ontology we had as a negative, but I guess it's on the boat. <laughs> yeah, I... It's just about sick. Well, <laughs> yeah. So I, I think this one's very particular to um, actual parameters. Okay. Like ontology for, for parameter space. Um, and this is like general ontologies okay. that actually scratch the entire spectrum. That there is prior out ontologies is valuable, but that we have a problem is the problem. Yeah, sure. Um, and so another one I have for positive is that there's a clear benefit, um, although I have a question mark against this, um, because uh, I, I think everyone thinks it's a clear benefit because we clearly try this a lot. But why do we try it a lot? What are the actual outcomes that we're looking for? Um, is something I think we should try to answer as well. So I'm going to put this kind of just slightly above the wall. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, I think one negative is that in a lot of ways, MD programs are fundamentally not interoperable with each other. Like, there's a lot of commonalities, but there's still a lot of functionality in each one that's specific to that single program. So I think this is something we should be aware of. Um, and kind of on that kind of vein is that they also have completely different data models. Like, how they actually think about their data, how they organize their data is completely different between programs. Um, depending if you're GPU or general HPC x86, you know, like it's completely different between programs as well. They kind of put these together. Do you have an example of that one? Nothing comes to mind. 
Sure, so um, I think this goes back to if you have a Fortran program, you want these really large contiguous rows. If you have a C program, you usually go more hierarchical, you know, kind of like object models. Um, and so fundamentally, like, they're organized a little bit differently um, from the go. Um, so how you, how you organize, like, say, your, your coordinates, um, for example, is actually different between programs, but not for so. Sure, and then we come to express things in a kind of story medium. Implementation, for instance, should go away. It should go away, but people very much care that they can read it directly into their program. I'm not sure why, but it's something that we see across the board, that people are extremely concerned with um, their internal representations being the same as external representations. It's it's a good example. Example. I mean, a good yeah. example is, for example, with a lot of the ways that people write coordinate files, they write all the X's, then all the Y's, then all the Z's, because that's what's come from the program. Whereas if you take the BEB, it's at an X, Y, Z, at an X, Y, Z, at an X, Y, Z. So what you, essentially what you're talking about here is a data model. So the PDB data model is that we have frames, and inside frames we have atoms and het atoms, and inside an atom we have an atom name, a residue name, an XYZ coordinate, blah, blah, blah. That data model can be represented on disk in many different formats. And actually the format that the data model is actually represented on disk really doesn't matter, because it's the data model. How bits of data interrelate with one another, that's what's contained in the PDB. And what happens is then when that's searched into a program, a program will extract the bits of that data model that's important for the program and then arrange it in memory in the way that the program needs to most efficiently run. Now the issue we have in the field is that we tend to write programs that go directly from the disk representation straight to the application representation and we don't actually think about the data models that are actually held that are represented in that file format. What we really need to be doing is Rather than saying should it be in JSON or should it be in XML or should it be in SCDF or should it be in this binary format, actually say what is the data that we need to actually represent? How does that data relate? What type of data is it? Is it arrays of floats? Is it arrays of doubles? How does that data get packaged up with other data? So we have a data for a molecule, but then there's also data for parameters, then we have data for running simulations, blah blah blah. Again, what are those bits of data? How do they get? interrelated and once you build a data model that says what are the bits of data and how they interrelate, how you blacked that data model to disk, who cares, really? If it's one file, hundred files, a thousand files, who cares? Because ultimately it's that <coughs> data model which is the thing you then want to go and take into application space to run applications. And if you say actually if everyone is working from a common data model, then we can support lots of formats underneath. And if all the applications speak the data model, they can actually go intermediately with that as well. And I am quite biased in this, and I say this because this is what the Biosim Space Project is, is we basically have an extremely flexible data model that relates parameters, force fields, molecules, molecular systems, how you run simulations, blah, blah, blah. And we deliberately do not write this data model to this. What we have are interconverters that effectively enable you to read and write any type of molecular data, any file format, into the data model, and then the data model then writes the input files for the individual programs and runs them. Effectively, MD analysis does that for trajectories. Cool. All right, I'll look forward to reading more about that so we can get better tools in space. Should we move on? Sure, that actually covers a lot of seek notes that internal and external representations should very much differ underneath the initiatives. We have, uh, again, think models and not formats. Like, I think a lot of people are thinking very clearly, like, oh, you know, what about HT5 or JSON or something like that? And uh, I, I would argue with well, Chris that this is kind of the wrong way of thinking about these things. Um, and instead, what you should really be thinking about, uh, again, is um, what kind of key value array sort of thing do you have? What kind of fundamental structure do you have? How is it organized? Um, how do you collect various objects underneath these kinds of ideas? Um, and a lot of people say, like, you know, let's do JSON, because JSON is great, and, and that's true. Um, but JSON, in a lot of ways, is actually a really forward format for HPC. It's extraordinarily slow. The numbers are not serialized in any kind of way. It's not compressible, et cetera. Um, and, you know, instead, there's all kinds of things which are like, uh, you know, message pack or parquet. Um, and these things can actually represent arrays extremely effectively. And the thing is, you can convert them between JSON and YAML and uh, whatever you want extremely easily. Right. So I, I wouldn't think about you know JSON. I think JSON as in like key value array structure. That's what you should think about, but not JSON itself. Um, so uh, on that note. Um, <clears throat> and as was pointed out, is that people already doing this data model uh, idea is actually pretty common. Um, so I think in the analysis that Trash has, 
Um, mostly kind of had a project for uh, interoperating uh, different kinds of trajectory file formats with Azure internal data models as well. Um, so I think you can find a lot of people trying this internal representation. Um, so we're thinking about and taking ideas from. Um, and then the, the final action item that we really want to say is that uh, you know all of this topic that we're talking about, what we're really trying to do is figure out like where the data model split is. Like so, what's the trajectory? What is metadata? Um, I think that isn't very clear because like a, a lot of people have what you would think of as metadata and trajectories and vice versa. Um, so the question is more like how do we conceptually uh, organize this data? Um, and so I think thinking about that will actually dictate a lot of what we think about in terms of uh, file formats and how we actually write these things in public. So I actually I didn't think about. And does that go anywhere? Identification of needs and system. Yes, and actually both. The nice thing with data models is it's not up to the software programmers then, it's up to the field to say this is the data, this is how we need to arrange it. And once you've got the data model, it's actually quite simple for a software programmer to go, okay, that's a data model, I've got a scheme for that, I'll do something to try to count represent the memory. If they're not software programmers, go and work and solve this problem for us. Okay, um, lucky last two minutes to come. So we don't have that many, uh, and uh, like we had a little bit of a challenge uh, because uh, at our table there was nobody who was actually developing file formats or just these kind of programs. So we were a little bit more thinking about like what we as users would like to have in these kind of ways. Uh, so like. First of all, what we really want to have is that it's um, storage efficient. We don't know how to really do this. They are already trying this out, uh, trying out different kind of file formats. Thinking we also have like um, actually the um, we actually did not. Yeah. So, so we have like storage space. Yes. As a, as a thing we have to manage. Yeah. Um, we also agreed that the so for us um, that the different existing file formats is not really that much of a problem. So we would, don't like aim for having just one file format because there are so many tools which easily just um, convert it. But we rather would like to have, um, yeah, like that all the formats have some standard input uh, which is actually in them. So that every, uh, every file format from things like have the same kind of um, input uh, which we afterwards can extract from them so in the end that um, when you took the conversion tools like have like like you said for this mapping up your high things so, so we, have, like, we have competing double models that are currently expressed in file formats yeah that part of the idea? yeah more or less. <laughs> um, yeah. okay yeah um, the metadata, like the JSON folder, is like more or less um, where is. So we have like existing formats that are good to be yes, on. Yes, exactly. Like it was mentioned in the box. But, yeah. <coughs> we have to, like, to have something like this, with, uh, which includes, oh, um, which it, uh, includes um, the information what uh, we want had. So where are exactly these uh, our structures com uh, coming? In the end, it would be have to like read started from like um, the PDB file um, then have information how it was processed but I mean that's an absolutely uh, wish list but it would already be great when you uh, could have some files uh, put in the information um, where uh, where you got this information from um, how long are your um, trajectory files and these kind of things uh, also, the thing which we would like to have is something uh, like a streaming feature, so that you don't have to priorly <coughs> load the complete trajectory in it to get information. Like, for example, um, like in a YouTube, you can just jump to a certain frame and say, uh, look from that on, and something like this that you don't have like to actually load everything in there. So that's something which we actually would like, and I think so far um, all the tools. Um, only uh, so you have to load it at least once per day. So, so just for so NetCDF, that's why you use NetCDF because you could just jump to any frame. Okay. 
I guess it contained the format. Sim exactly similarly changed the name. There is progress in this field. Obviously, not everybody has made enough progress. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I guess that's an actual item. Okay. It's, it's a thing uses a lot. So, uh, what makes it complex? Um, like, we have to agree on all the information which should um, go into these files. I think that's already been mentioned. Um, so that's, that's similar to the previous point. Yeah, or like, well, that's like a challenge it's, it's to, makes it complex, yeah. to get that, <laughs> so that's yes. similar. Yeah, so there's, yeah. there's models and formats and types of information that's probably important. <coughs> um, and we have the point, uh, what about post-analysis? So do we also want to have a file format which like gives us something out of the analysis which is the same for everything? Yeah. Um, I think also one point they said that it's sometimes hard to distinguish. Uh, it's not always clear cut what is just uh, the output of a trajectory. Even when we define a state, we might have some kind of meat uh, analysis running during the simulation upon which the simulation decides on where to go, when to stop, and all these like stop conditions, for example. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, they can be, to take Chris's ideas of dialogues, they can be hierarchical things. This is how I think about a human structure, this is how I think about a molecular system, this is how I think about a simulation. How to think about a scientific workflow is now another out of that one. There you have the need to have post process results connected. There's actually NASA's done a lot of work on this. And what they've done is they actually created a three level model that I think is generally applicable. And the top level is simulation. So the data is actually running for the simulation. The middle level is what they call campaign. And campaign and all the simulations and all the things which are evolved, but actually the complete campaign to complete the experiment. And then they have archive, and archive is now the campaign is finished, it's now gone on to cold storage. And they have different formats and different things for running live, running the campaign, and then going into archive. There's actually different uses and needs for those three levels. Who is this? NASA. Oh. So that's, that's under initiative. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> they have a really good paper actually where they describe it. this because they run a wide range of simulations. Um, yeah, then, like it was mentioned in the talk, the, uh, something like the JSON uh, file format or you can save this, and like we already discussed that it has um, cons uh, pros and cons, and yeah, it was like. So, yeah, this is yeah. part of the yeah, yeah. yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, like, it's already existing copy, so, but, yeah, um, and in general tools um, for readability, so those which are, like, human readable and machine readable, if you um, think, you could also think, like, um, what uh, you, you don't, actually need to have all the file formats uh, being readable by the human if you have good tools who give you um, the output in a good way that everybody can read it. So, you had it? Um, action. Action. Yeah, action. Okay. <coughs> it's an existing initiative. All right, so thank you everybody for that large collection of ideas. We have about half an hour, no less, 15 minutes uh, left where we can talk about how we move forward from, from this set of ideas. We did already reflect that there's an awful lot of things that need to be done by software people that we as a large community need to be involved in setting up the, the boundary conditions for those. Uh, Somebody? Yeah, so my impression is that there are a little bit to opinions which direction we should go. Because there, there is roughly one direction is that we have a standardized file format which we put in all the programs sort of we are using and then these programs give up on their own formats. So then everybody would be using the same format and there would not be these specific formats for each program anymore. The other direction is that programs keeps their formats and then we have a convergers. And 
My feeling is that I a little bit heard arguments for uh, both uh, directions. But it's not that at all, right? You can have a program that can be about performance. Mm. And I think by, that's by far, and I think it's unlikely that all programmers will give up the ability to read their native formats right away. But I think being able to read this format too provides an easy solution that you don't have to convert. Ultimately, if the new formats deliver value to funders or PIs or students or users, then they will get adopted. <coughs> The software that has not yet adapted to be able to read and write them will gradually fall away in usage. So that's, that's I think, the path to getting things standardized rather than trying to come up with some sort of registered body that says you can't do a meal unless you do this for. Mm -hmm. Can I go back to data models and again what mm -hmm. needs to be done? I, I think for data models there's also a lot of work that has been done so far. It's just largely neglected one because nobody really cares, right? So there are people who have developed data models but nobody really cares. Like for example, from um, Thomas Chatham group, I think it's called iBiomes. It's actually a pretty good model, I think, at least to start with. So it's, you don't have to start from scratch. It can, that you can already parse all the input files from um, all the major MD software packages. Conrad, Conrad Hinson has developed several data models, I think. And there, are, and there are also general data models that are sitting out there. And now, how you would call each field, I think it, it doesn't really matter because the structure exists out there. So I don't think there is so much effort that needs to be done in terms of like actually building the software, but it's more about reaching the consensus about what kind of content you want to put in and how you want to hold these, like what, what, what are the variable names. And I think that's where the problem begins. Can we have a poster for our lawyers? Is this the same as ontology you were mentioning? Or yeah, or essentially. It, the, <coughs> it's connected, right? So, it's, so because ontologies and web work uh, semantic web, you need to kind of know which word means what, and we need to agree that this word actually means that particular thing. So we don't have different definition of, I don't know what's thermostat, right? Like, I mean, you can think that it's a right job, or <coughs> and someone can think, I don't know, a uh, lantern or something else. Mm -hmm. Like, it's so, uh, we need to make sure that we know and that every word has like one-to-one -one mapping, essentially, because there is no space for ambiguity. And exactly, it's that point. So what happens is when the field gets to a point where they think that their existing file formats are too slow to evolve because there's a burdensome committee period to get new keywords accepted, they tend to go, aren't key value stores really wonderful? And then they throw away the existing file format, they jump onto key value stores, and then over time they produce, they, they have different meanings for the keys and different data types of the values, and then they suddenly realize they need to create a committee that standardizes the key names and standardizes the data types, and shock horror, you've recreated the initial file structure. And that's the thing. So ontology is what a community can do is a community can define ontology and actually agree the meanings of things and what how data interrelates. The solution is not generic key value stores because generic key value stores is just everybody coming up with their own names and everybody coming up with their own values. And as soon as different groups starting writing those to disk, they've got chaos because we all need different things. I think one of the things that came out from our discussion something we really struggle with with biosim space is there's this naive view that all of our tools are interoperable when they're not. You know, if I take the same input from one ND package, it will not run in another ND package. There isn't a standard definition of what we mean by the thermostats or the integrators or any of those things. And this is why these initiatives fail as soon as you get past kind of the, the coordinates, the velocities, the force field parameters. And even with the force field parameters, if there's disagreement, you know, actually what they mean, what, what is 2,3P water? Well, actually, it's different in different packages. So what I'd like to see is not so much as what the, you know, a community file form, I'd like the community to begin to evolve to what is the ontology for this area? What do we mean by 2,3P water? You know, what is a tip 3B water in terms of the fast field parameters and how it works, how it interacts with shake, how, what is a protein, how do we define them, those kind of things. And once you've got the ontology, our formats and how we start on disk, that's so trivial. I think everybody agrees that's, that's a good thing to aim for, but we need to start somewhere where there's enough common ground and probably something where there's enough incentive to work together um, that you could do something cool that you couldn't do before. And I, I don't know if that's like taking the MPRO and MD or something like that, be able to export in this common uh, common data model format um, that would then be usable in all of our simulation codes right out of the bat. That would be extremely useful, for example. But there might be something else that would be a minimal subset of things we could do and then some cool thing we could do with it immediately. The thing I'd love to see is basically more take up. I mean, I have nothing to do with the MD analysis project or the MD trad project, but I think they're fantastic projects. 
because they've recognized that it, it doesn't matter what the trajectory format is, it's what you're doing with the trajectory that's the interesting thing. And it doesn't matter what, you know, it'll just load up whatever trajectory format you've got. And as a community, we can actually support and develop. Yeah, I didn't know empty tragic died, which is sad. But if we can support and develop empty analysis, we really begin throwing stuff into that rather than to our own individual analysis tools, that'd be great. But that's not that doesn't help with uh, Eric's point with uh, you know, debugging and running things from one software to the other and that sort of thing. But I, different I think there are two very different parts, right? Coordinates and all these analysis problems, in principle, that's a very simple problem. Right. Farce, it's like two or three orders of magnitude simpler than specifying all the parameters how a simulation should be run. And uh, case in point, there is not a single package that provides an ability to cross-reference parameters and start simulations in different packages. Um, Simply because it has to be exact. It's not, I can't interpret it. I need to use exactly the same terms at exactly the same settings. On the other hand, I think the good thing is that it is well defined, right? Because all of these programs, they have implementations, and the implementations are exact. Then they say we might not have an ontology for it. But well, they have different implementations. This is the issue. Sure, but the implementation is Amber and is exact and open M and Grovex. And then we might have to realize that they differ. And sure, then we have to use different words for them. Or fix the implementation. Yeah. Good. So I suggest we finish up by reflecting on what things we individually might be able to contribute to these in future, in order to contribute to writing some words for our white paper afterwards. Um, in order to reflect, can I contribute to this, the evolution of these ontologies? Can I help recognize existing efforts such as iBiomes? Can we build those into uh, data models that are suitable for? some minimum viable product of things relevant to biomolecular simulations or biomolecular um, calculations more generally, thinking broader than, than MD. Um, how can we then set up some boundary conditions so that the people who are implementing analysis suites and uh, simulation packages and docking programs and web servers and all, all these kinds of things have the ability to refer to a community document and say, okay, this, this, these sort of things are what my users need, now I can go and make sure that I get that done in a way that's consistent and, can I also add one more thing? So how do we also ensure that whatever we do doesn't follow the same uh, destiny of MD crash, right? So there you like it lives for two years and then dies and it's gone. And we can say it was so nice, but uh, it doesn't it's not supported. What happened to MD crash? It's only no longer supported. Only like there was a software hard. institute that would uh, was responsible for being the caretakers and uh, stewards of of useful interoperable software tools for our community. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I would say no. That's also dangerous right? because none of them are funding for it more than the next four or five years. And then they might be gone. And that's because back that if we're going to do this, you can't think that there is funding available. We will have to take this on as a long term engagement even if we don't have funding. <laughs> Ultimately, we're multiple projects. But in the short term, we might be able to fund it for these institutes. That's fine, right? But if we want this, we can't think of securing funding for it, which is a scary part. <laughs> But, but we still need people to do it, right? Yes, but it will have to be an engagement that we prioritize in our groups even when we don't have dedicated funding for it. Otherwise, again, funding fluctuates. No matter what funding we find for this, there will be a point in time where there is that funding, specific funding is no longer available. And then it will die if we focus it entirely on funding at that time. But equally, if we, well, we, one of the problems in the field is we tend to produce scratch. We get rewarded for producing new tools from scratch to how grants work. And we tend to produce a new tool from scratch. And actually, when it comes to writing a new analysis thing for MD, if we just throw it into tools like MD Analysis, you would then begin to build a proper open source community, which makes it more immune to having individual funding fluctuating. And then in terms of sustainability, we're very good at producing tools. Gromax is excellent at producing tests, I would say. Gromax is a very good example of a sustainable piece of software, but most software that we write tends to be written in a way where it's not able to be picked up and put down, because it doesn't have tests and burden control and proper documentation and a proper community management model. And we need to add those things onto the software project we make so that then if the original group with us away, another group can come in and, and immediately keep building in the same framework. And that's how all open source projects basically became successful. They didn't have continual funding from the government. They do pick up and put down because they put the community layers for sustainable suffering in place. I think we should all think about this too, not just what tools do we need, but how to make it sustainable and how to build it.
So yeah, we need people to contribute words to this, we need people to think about ontologies, we need people to then think about how to convert those into to things that uh, can become standards of the software. So those are, those are going to be big challenges for us all over the next couple of months. There are those of us with time and funding right now to put primary work in here. I'm happy to contribute to those efforts. Hopefully some of you are able to as well um, in, in the different areas where you have different kinds of expertise. I'm not the right person to be specifying what the data model is because I don't run simulations I do in the MD packages. So it's no good just looking at, oh, you're the software guy in, in uh, Excel. I'm not going to do it all for you. I don't have the time or the amount of funding. I have lots of other things to do as well, as do you all. We, we all do understand and appreciate that. But as a for funding, so here we have Marcy, we have BioXM representative, so from some European organization. Do we think that at least this consortium can give something to, to start with, a bit of money to, to, to try to do something, to start something, or I don't know, or can we identify at least some sources that can be contacted to, to try to fund that? Let's say from, from Biosim Space, which I think is the, the British equivalent of this bill to the most like. Um, we can put some post on time to basically write up and write this because obviously everything we're focused around is defining data models <coughs> and converters and the importance of building data models and how you build them in a sustainable way. So we can definitely contribute time for people to write in bits of that as well. Uh, the same thing on BioXL, we can certainly find people time short term to help with defining things and doing a bit of implementations, but it's also the danger there, right, is that if you have two or three places with funding for it, it easily becomes a side project that those groups are involved in. And that's, we need to think of sustainability. How do we feel that this is a shared ownership that we all do together? And hey, at some point in the short term, there might be some funding for it too, but I think we need to start by thinking something. How do we involve all the community in this? And it's unlikely, it's not fun here, but it's unlikely that we would find a grant that would be able to support everybody. Because those grants, they don't exist. Collaborations, two, three, four groups, yes, but 25 groups, no. Does there also have to be something, I mean, we, we see many benefits of having this common data model, but does there have to be something particularly interesting we could yeah. do, like finally be able to compare different codes or things or benchmark things together? Yeah, I think mean, that's what we have to put into the Biosim Space Grant. So specifically, we're building it so you could run different workflows with different underlying packages and do force build on package comparisons. So the, this comparison could be the explicit, yeah, like we're yeah. looking towards this big energy and accuracy comparison or performance comparison or the accuracy, what's the best method for prior yeah. prediction of binding? I find accuracy far more interesting than the performance. Yes. Uh, yes. Because again, we can start a comparison with free and decalculations, right? The, mm -hmm. there, there are a ton of small settings and are the things that we know that tend to improve accuracy. And that's essentially what she hits that work she can shell. Get a Essentially those kind of questions. What is the right what, what is what does this does this parameter actually mean anything? Maybe on a much more concrete level, that is sidetracking a little bit. Um, for the uh, code like the Romex or so, I think one very useful uh, thing is to separate the internal data representation from the external data representation. And that means splitting off uh, like XCC file reading more into libraries than um, having this uh, seen as being part of a uh, Gromix. Uh, as already has happened with the TNG, but I think there's lots of uh, like file I.O. going on that is uh, so much intertwined with uh, what the program does internally that uh, that might be like a, a, a smaller work package we could immediately benefit from. Um, it's something we already have in the XDR files that are over yeah. a decade or more. Yeah. One thing, People re implement it all the time, though, if they're a package, so it's good. But one thing I would like to see is actually for the packages to, do, to document their data models. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Gromax is very good, but uh, I'm saying, <laughs> I'm <laughs> <thinking> <laughs> so, I think it's because I work with lots of MD packages, and Gromax is by far the best, because <coughs> actually, they're, in the manual, it does define 90% of what's in the file, not in terms of the data model, but in terms of this is what the line should be. And, most of the time it's correct. There are times where actually it's not correct. That's by more than 51% it's correct. <laughs> but I think you're giving us too much credit. <laughs> Amber is terrible. 
in terms of defining what their data format is, and actually, and they're not what the data format is, but they have nothing to say what the data model is. Except for the NetCDF trajectory spec, which Except is the NetCDF extremely which clear. Which is brilliant. Everything else is terrible. Yes. Um, Charm PSF, not going to talk about. Um, <laughs> multi file format, oh my god. Um, but that's the thing, I think for the individual software packages, we need to actually begin if a creative file format actually can clearly define a document that says this is the schema, this is the this is the grammar for this format, these are the items, this is the data model, this is the ontology. Because those documents make it so much easier for us to build these tools. And actually then we need to look at the file formats in terms of their ontologies, so that then you can find the commonalities. So we want several things though, we want both the low level Form, serialized format spec, and there again could be multiple because yeah. it could be multiple realizations of the same data model, which is what we want people to use. But if we want them to use it, we also need a common implementation that's well documented and that is easy to link against, and that's maybe standalone somewhere where you can pull it into your C or C plus plus program or have Python uh, API as well to easily manipulate from that. So I mean that's the great thing about things like NetCDF is that the NetCDF for Python implementation is very easy to use, or you can grab it into your Fortran or C. Yeah. Um, but it, it, there's so much support for developers to easily use it that it's easier to do that than to roll your own reader or writer, which I presume is what happens with these XTC files. Um, yes, one, one of the packages wrote it in the wrong Indians because they call it themselves. Okay. I mean, NetCDF is wonderful because NetCDF basically has pandas, which is different. Yeah. Some people have heard of pandas. But it's, ju it's just so easy to use yeah. from Python by a single import or a single install line. I agree, and then you have things like Pandas, which is a, a, a general, generic data analysis platform, which then you can interface with NumPy and Matplotlib, which could then do analysis of any type of NetCDF file, because it's already in that data frame format. Um, <coughs> it's just, it makes, I, mean, I would love if the entire field said, yes, we're just all going to put all of our array data, we'll just put straight into NetCDF, it would make everyone's life so much easier. And again, that's a data format thing, not a data model thing. I mean, it really doesn't matter exactly what the format is if we, if we can at least all agree on that data model, and I think that would be a phenomenal outcome. Well, we have a bunch of prior art in the development of the TNG library that worked at these couple of different levels that should be able to be generalized to wider community needs. So we have uh, already published work there that I'm sure we can synthesize with other people's efforts. So is it then Voyager or DS9? <laughs> Trajectory next generation. <laughs> <laughs>